Hello, this is a part of C programming videos on securitytube.net. Till now we have seen the programming practices with arrays, pointers, structures, etc. How to pass pointers across the functions, how to define an array, how this array can be programmed with help of pointers, etc. How to define structures, what is exact relation between structures and pointers, can I define a pointer to the structure how to pass structure across functions with the help of pointer etc. The main beauty of the C programming language still lies in the runtime memory allocation. Till now what we have doing, doing is allocating a memory at the compile time itself. But can we allocate the memory while the program is running? Many times it is the case that while writing the program or while compiling the program we does not know how much memory space the program will take that decision is dependent upon some other inputs like some files or some user inputs etc so if we can defer the allocation of memory till the runtime of the program it will be far more efficient coding practice and c gives you handle for that this particular video is on memory allocation and I'll be talking more about how to allocate memory, how to free that memory while the program is in a running state. In C language, actually these are the four functions available for allocating and deallocating the memory. So malloc, calloc, realloc, these first three functions are responsible for actually allocating the memory and the last function free actually frees the memory. Now in which situation, which function has to be used for allocation, I will be talking more about that shortly. So how malloc is different from calloc and realloc and how realloc is different from other two, I will be talking about this in this video. Let's open Unix terminal. Let me open man page or manual page for malloc. Now remember man pages or manual pages are the ideal thing to learn basic functions in unix so a malloc is one of the c basic functions so i have just typed man malloc and it will show me the manual page for malloc now in this malloc page itself it is talking about calloc malloc free and realloc so in this video i'll be talking all about this the man pages in linux are self explanatory so these all functions are defined in stdlib.h so if you want to use any of these functions you have to include stdlib.h in your program what exactly a malloc does so if malloc allocates the size bytes and returns a pointer to the allocated memory the memory is not cleared so the syntax for malloc is void star malloc size so for malloc you have to give a single argument which is a size which is an integer argument it's a size so what actually malloc does malloc goes ahead and allocates the size number of bytes in the memory after allocation of the size number of byte it returns a pointer and you have to assign this pointer to some variable to access these allocated bytes and one more thing that malloc does not do actually is it does not clears the, uh, clears the memory so the contents of this memory are just garbage malloc does not care about what are the contents of the memory it just goes ahead allocates the memory returns a pointer and that's it second important function is calloc calloc is very much similar to malloc the only difference is malloc does not initial, initializes the memory but calloc initializes the memory to zero so as it is saying calloc will allocate the memory uh, for an array of n meb elements of size bytes so calloc has actually two arguments first is size t of n member and second is size t of size so simple to remember calloc will allocate size of multiplication of these two so many bytes for so many size and it will also uh, return a pointer but it will also go ahead and initialize all this memory to zero. Remember in malloc, calloc or realloc, the returned pointer, which I am saying always, it returns a pointer. 
this pointer is a char star pointer so if you want to allow if you want to assign this pointer to some other variable some other structure then you will have to type cast that pointer to that structure i'll be taking one programming example and in that programming example where to type cast and how to type cast will be i guess more clear but remember the pointer returned is char star pointer so you have to type cast it before assigning it to another variable or another pointer so trade off between calloc and malloc simple if you want to initialize your memory after allocation use calloc if you don't want to initialize your, your memory to zero after allocation use malloc in most of the examples you will have to initialize your memory to zero if you are using some string operations etc so the use of calloc is preferred many times but it is not that malloc should not be used if you don't want to initialize and the next assignment itself is assigning some variables it is very much possible to use malloc then the third allocation function is realloc now many times it is the case that first time when you are allocating the memory you don't want to allocate a big chunk you want to allocate some short memory and then depending upon some other conditions you want to extend this allocated memory to a bigger chunk if that is the case in your program possibly rather than using malloc or, or calloc realloc is a better function for you so realloc changes the size of memory block pointed by ptr to the size bytes so again realloc takes two arguments as the function arguments so realloc void ptr and size size so actually realloc takes a pointer void pointer and it changes the size of this void pointer by size so assume that this pointer was actually allocating n number of bytes and in the flow of program we derived that instead of n number of bytes i want n plus m number of bytes so i simply have to call function realloc with first argument as ptr which is pointing to n number of bytes and second argument size as m plus n so this second argument size is the new size which you want the variable to get allocated now while this allocation a very important question that it will be in your mind is what happens to the contents of my older allocated memory yes those content remains as it is so what the processor or what the uh, c program is doing on the back end when you call the function realloc it copies your previous content if it is possible to extend the memory at that location itself it will simply extend if not it will copy the previous chunk to the new address and that's the thing which realloc itself does you don't have to worry about copying this so i will just read it out realloc changes the size of memory block pointed by ptr to size bytes the contents will be unchanged to the minimum of old and new sizes you can also resize this with that is new size can be even lesser than older size newly allocated memory will be uninitialized which is pretty much obvious because the older memory has to be retained so you cannot simply initialize ho ho whole your memory so realloc realloc is very much similar to malloc only that it extends your memory or it changes the size of the allocation one more thing the ptr is null if the ptr is null that is realloc is passed with first argument as null and second argument as size this is very much similar to malloc so in some loop variables you may have to use realloc you may have to first use malloc and then in a loop you you want to use realloc then in, instead of using first malloc you can simply use realloc itself with first pointer first argument as null and realloc with first argument null will exactly act as malloc so unless ptr is null it must have been returned by the earlier call of the malloc simple